Okay, we're going to look at categorizing computers, and uh, unfortunately, I have to stand today, so I'm looking down at the computer, so uh, forgive me if I keep looking down, okay? Categorizing computers, because we have all different kinds of computers, so how do we categorize them? How do we compare them? Let's have a look. We're going to have a look at a whole bunch of them today, we've got from smartphone, tablets, netbook, which I'm sure you've heard of, laptops, desktops, servers, and of course then the supercomputers, which are the big bad boys at the end. So let's have a look. If we put them into two main sections, we've got portable and not portable. And you can see here, we have from the smartphone, tablet, netbook, up to laptop, those are portable, and we know they're portable, they're mobile, so we can pick them up, we can take them around, we can carry them easily, they've got their own power supply, no problem. Not portable, what what classifies something as not portable? Well, it has to have its uh, a dedicated power supply, so it's got to be plugged into something, and you can't just pick it up and walk around with it. So we have desktops, servers, and supercomputers. Let's have a look. Uh, it's worth noting that as we start off with smartphones working our way up to the supercomputers, that we see that there's an increase in processor speed and processor power and just general power of the computer. So a server by default is going to be a lot more powerful than a desktop. A desktop should be a lot more powerful than a laptop simply because you can get more components or better components into it. However, laptops and desktops today are very much on par. So always look at the specs if you're going to purchase something. Okay. Let's start off with a smartphone in terms of mobility, processing power, and usage. Mobility, it's very portable, it fits in your hand, it's battery powered that's pretty easy processing power here we have uh, the, the newer phones okay like the Samsung s20 which is still very new has a 64-bit octa-core processor there's some information there if you just scan that QR code it will take you to some more information I think that's pretty powerful go find out what an octa-core processor is we use the cell phone or smartphones for general communication web browsing, social media, photography, video recording, listening to music, games. The tablet, battery powered, very mobile, portable. Also, octa-core, 2.8 gigahertz. Don't forget, the that is how we measure the speed of a processor. Go and do some research on what that gigahertz, GHZ, actually stands for. Look in the textbook that I got you guys. General communication, web browsing, social media. Again, very much what we would use a phone for. We often use a tablet for. Maybe not making phone calls and such, but uh, video conversations, things like that, we use tablets for a lot. The netbook. Now, if you're not sure about what netbooks actually are, and you've heard of netbooks, but you're not sure what the difference is between a netbook and a laptop, there's a QR code for you. Scan that QR code. That'll give you some more information. Netbooks are also portable, battery powered, a little bit larger than a tablet, and they have a bigger charging unit as well. Your processing power, it's one gigahertz to two gigahertz, and it's made to be small, more affordable than a laptop. It's made for home and work use. It's great for people who work uh, around and they travel around a lot. The laptop, one of the most common computers nowadays, is portable, battery powered. The battery usage, obviously, the battery usage depends on usage. Uh, I mean, maybe I should fix that sentence. The battery usage depends on how much you use it and what you're using the laptop for. It has a charging unit. The larger models can be a bit heavier, depending on what components they have inside. Typical processor would be something like an Intel Core i7 that is slightly higher range, 1.8 gigahertz up to 4.6 gigahertz, 4.60 gigahertz, four cores, probably octa cores now, okay, which is eight. And what would we use it for? Well, everything home and work use, web browsing, emailing, watching videos, music, applications, also very popular with those who travel a lot and need to work on the road. The desktop. The desktop is not mobile. You can't just pick it up and walk around. The Intel Core i3 to i7 is where we would have the processors. 2.9 gigahertz up to 4.10. Small office, home office usage, gaming, web browsing. Do you see that a lot of them are very similar in terms of the functions? It's just the processor, the RAM, and the, the mobility that makes the difference. 
Now we get onto the server. The server is something a little bit different from all the other machines that we've been looking at. All the other machines have been for our own personal use and they've been most of them have been mobile, the portable. One of them has been non-mobile, that was the desktop. Now the server is something different. The server is definitely not mobile. It uh, for example, he has a server with a 10 core, 25 meg cache, 2.2 gigahertz that's per core. So there's some information there. Scan that QR code to find out more about the server processing power. A server is a dedicated machine. It can be for network file storage, authentication of users, providing services to the network, firewall and proxies, network security, it could be a mail server, it could be a, a web server. So a server is a very powerful machine but it's dedicated to having resources available for a network and that it has specific functions so you wouldn't go and sit and work on a server like you would on a desktop. The supercomputer is something that not many of us will ever really get to see. These are very 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 big computers and they are made to be exceptionally powerful. The processing power for example of Intrepid, in, Intrepid IBM's supercomputer has 164,000 processor cores. Okay, that means it can perform, and I've said it here, over 100 quadrillion operations per second. That is very, very fast. So what do we do with all that power? Computational science, deep data mining, machine learning, forecasting, as in like weather forecasting, for example, molecular modeling, simulations, cryptanalysis, breaking codes, things that we need exceptional power for. That's what supercomputers are for. So that is all of our computers. I hope that you are able to understand the difference between these various computers, what their uses are for, if they are portable or not portable, and that is how we categorize them. Anything that you use your phone for, that's what a phone is for. That's what, that makes no sense. And um, it's just a netbook.